Hey guys, welcome to our last lesson. Yes, this is our last time, uh, at least online, that we're going to be seeing each other. Okay, so, but don't fret, tá? Lembrem que quando terminar é, essa pandemia, essa questão toda, a gente ainda deve voltar para a sala de aula para rever algumas coisinhas aí, tá? Então, essa vai ser apenas nosso último encontro online. Alright? Então, relaxa aí, fique de boa, vamos ver essa última lição aí para a gente poder encerrar nosso assunto, belezinha? E a gente vai ver o quê? The world is yours. Lesson 30, beginning on page 122. Wow. Long journey. Very well. Então, vamos lá. É, já pega o livrinho aí. Ok? Everybody go back. Get your books so we can proceed together. Let's go. Today, we will see warm-up words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, speak up, listening, talking, talk time, listening, reading, practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. The world is yours. So, we're getting to the end of our course. You are now better equipped to go somewhere in the world and use your English. You can talk to people. You can read books you can watch movies and as much as some of you may think you don't just try you will be surprised with your own abilities just believe me let's go on to our warm-up let's go uh, with some of the following items which of these do you guys own do you own a tablet do you own a cell phone do you own a television or an mp3 player although i don't i think a lot of people don't have those anymore uh cds who has cds <laughs> car do you have a car do you have sunglasses what about a computer which of these do you own which of these do you possess i have a cell phone i have a tv i have a computer I have a tablet, although I don't use it anymore, at least not as often. I don't have CDs, at least not for a while. <laughs> Very well. Let's go on to uh, this question right here. Which do you consider necessities? Which of these do you think is something that you need? And which of them do you think are luxuries? Which of them do you think are just you know, luxury, something you don't really need, but it's nice to have. Well, I think these days a cell phone is a necessity, right? I think everybody needs a cell phone. We need to communicate, we need to talk to people, we need to be able to go online and stuff. Uh, I guess to me, that's the only really necessity because then with a phone, you have a TV, you can watch Netflix and stuff. It's always nice to have a television. Uh, but I would say most of the other things are luxuries. Although for me, a computer is a necessity. I need a computer, especially to uh, do these classes. Uh, it's a tool for work. Right? It's a work tool. So yeah, for me, a computer is a necessity. Absolutely. Let's go on to words in action. Let's go. Então, gente, prestando atenção. Okay, let's listen and let's repeat. Book three. Lesson 30. Words in action. Flee. Flee. Laos. Laos. Although we Botany. usually say uh, we usually say lice. We usually pronounce uh, lice because we use the the plural. Laos is only one. We usually say lice in the plural. Alright. Moving on. Botany. Botany. Lid. Lid. Awful. Awful. Hardship. Hardship. Curb. Curb. Reminder. Reminder. Fate. Fate. Turkey. Turkey. Feast. Feast. Vitamin. Vitamin. Harvest. Harvest. Seeds. Seeds. Gear shift. Gear shift. Reverse gear. 
reverse gear. To heed. To heed. Our first verb. Past. Heeded. 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 Heeded as well. To bump. To bump. Bumped. 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 Bumps again. To reverse. To reverse. Reversed. 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 Reversed as well. To reap. To reap. Reaped. 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 To reckon. To reckon. Reckoned. 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 To sow. To sow. Sowed. 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 To spin. To spin. Spun. 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 To skip. To skip. Skipped. 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 Skipped as well. Ok, então vamos lá rapidinho. A gente tem flea, que é pulga. A gente tem laus, que é piolho. E como eu falei, a gente fala o okay, quê? No plural, lies. Tá? Muito comum a gente não tem um piolho só, a gente tem vários, normalmente. A gente não, eu não sei, vocês, I don't know. Uh, botany, tá? é o estudo das plantas, né? botânica. Lid é uma tampa. We have awful, que é uma coisa terrível, é algo muito ruim. Tá? Hardship é uma dificuldade, é algo complicado de conseguir. Curb é o meio fio, tá? é aquela parte do meio da estrada. Uh, reminder é um lembrete. Tá? A gente tem aí, ó, fate, que é destino. Turkey, que é um peru, tipo peru de Natal. Feast, que é um banquete. Vitamin, vitamina. Harvest, colheita. Seeds, sementes. Gear shift, é a caixa de marcha, tá? É o câmbio, a marcha do carro. Reverse gear, é a marcha de ré. We have to heed, que seria prestar atenção, ouvir. To bump, que é você colidir, bater. Você tem to reverse, que é você dar a ré, reverter algo. To reap, é você colher ou ceifar, que nem a gente tem lá em cima, o Grim Reaper, tá? É o ceifador sinistro. Como é que a gente chama ele? A gente chama ele de, olha só, de Grim. Ok, deixa eu diminuir aqui, ó, ó. A gente chama ele de Grim Reaper, tá? Ele é o ceifador sinistro, tá? Esse processo dele é o Reap, que é o mesmo que a gente tem aqui de To Reap, tá? Porque ele é, não sei se vocês já viram, mas um, um, foi uma foice, por mais assustadora que seja, é uma ferramenta de colheita, tá? A gente usa ela para ceifar as, as ervas. To Sow, que é plantar ou semear. To Spin, você girar. E to skip, você pular algo, passar adiante. Ok? Let's go on to our first talk time. Let's go on to question number one. Are you good at top spinning? O que, que seria top spinning? Aquela brincadeira que o pessoal tem quando é criança, de pegar um negócio assim, enrolar, 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 e depois você... Vim! Quem é que é? Peão. E aí, vocês são bons de peão? Eu, eu era quando era criança, não sei se eu ainda sei jogar peão. Uh, number two, did you ever bump the curve while reversing? Você já bateu no meio fio quando estava no ré? I don't think I have ever done that. I don't think I ever will. Minha mãe me ensinou bem. Number three, have you ever sowed a garden with, with vegetable seeds? Se você já semeou um jardim com sementes vegetais. I can't say that I have. I, I, the only thing I ever planted was a bean on cotton. Quem aqui, quando era criança, já não plantou aquele feijãozinho no, no algodão? Number four. How was this year's wheat harvest in Brazil? Não sei se vocês sabem. Eu também não sei. A colheita do trigo esse, esse ano. I have no idea. Number five. What does you reap what you sow mean? O que, que é you reap what you sow? Você colhe o que você planta. Right? What does that mean to you? Qual é o significado dessa expressão? Yeah? So if you do something to others, 
you usually will have that done to you. So be good to others and others will be good to you. Uh, number six, do you enjoy rope skipping, pular corda? Hmm? Rope skipping. I used to be really good when I was a kid. I used to really like rope skipping. I don't know these days. Number seven. Did you skip any English classes this month? Quem aí pulou aula de inglês essa semana? Quem gazeou aula? Kind of hard to skip classes when you're having home classes, right? When you have online classes. Number eight. Who do you reckon is Brazil's best soccer player? I guess these days most people would say Neymar, I guess. Maybe he's the best soccer player in Brazil. No idea. Uh, number nine, do you heed road signs? Você presta atenção nas placas de trânsito? Even if you're not a driver, uh, you still have to pay attention to the road signs. Mesmo se você for pedestre. And number ten, do you believe in fate? E aí, gente, vocês acreditam em destino? Fate. Maybe, but just a little. I don't believe in fate in the way that people believe in fate, that we are all predestined. Let's go to useful expressions. So we have a few here. First one is after you, after you. Yeah. Que é exatamente o que parece, tá? After you. É o que o professor Girafales diz para Dona Florinda. Depois de você, depois da senhora, tá? Então, a gente tem aí, ó, let's get inside. After you. Vamos entrar. Depois de você. And then after you get in, you say? At last. Alone at last. <laughs> yeah. Alone at last. Sozinhos. Enfim. At last. Enfim. Né? Quando você consegue finalmente uma coisa depois de muito tempo. Next we have to button your lip. Button your lip. In Portuguese, we zip our lips, right? A gente passa um zip. But in English, you button your lips. Você põe um botão, ó. To stay silent. Button your lip. No one can know anything about that. Ninguém pode saber nada sobre isso. To be cross. Don't be cross. He didn't mean to hurt you. Aí no livro, em alguns livros tem escrito cross, com ED, tá? Mas normalmente a expressão é to be cross. I am very cross, tá? Quer dizer que eu estou com raiva. Não fique com raiva, ele não quis lhe machucar, não fique chateado, ok? Então essa é a ideia do to be cross, ficar chateado ou chateada. Let's go on to grammar file real quick, where we have the five senses, right? So we have a uh, sight. Right here, como a gente viu lá passado, cinco sentidos, né? Ó, sight, visão, taste, é o gosto, né? Uh, feel, seria o que? O nosso tato, né? A gente tem uh, sound, que é o nosso ouvido, né? A gente tem hearing, que vem da audição. E a gente tem smell, que é o nosso <risos> nariz, né? É o nosso é, olfato. Ok? Então, baseado em cada um desses sentidos, em cada um desses sentidos, a gente vai ter coisas que parecem. Em português, tudo parece, né? Se for som, parece. Se for cheiro, parece. Se for o tato, parece. Se for o olhar, parece. In English, it's different. Tá? Então, a gente vai dizer que uma coisa se assemelha a outra baseado no sentido. Por exemplo, first sentence, tá? a gente tem It looks like it's going to rain. It looks like it's going to rain. Parece que vai chover, né? O visual está de que vai chover. Então, essa é a ideia do looks like. Você viu e você contestou, você atestou que vai chover. Né? Você viu com, com a sua visão. Parece visualmente. It tastes like strawberry. Você provou um negócio? Hum, it tastes like strawberry. It would be similar to, in Portuguese... Tem gosto de, tem gosto de morango, né? Mas a gente também fala parece morango. Né? Então a ideia é, it tastes like strawberry. Next we have, it feels like silk. Você pega uma roupa, você toca nela. Hum, it feels like silk, né? Parece, o que é silk? Parece seda. Né? Então mais uma vez, a gente está usando um sentido para dizer que uma coisa parece com outra, né? O tato, o toque parece. Right? Then we have, 
It sounds like thunder. It sounds like thunder. Né? Soa como que? Trovão. Soa como trovão. Quando você ouve aquele barulho de trovão, né? Aquele barulho de trovão. Como é que é um barulho de trovão mesmo? Hum, eu acho que é mais ou menos assim. It sounds like thunder. <risos> Se você ouvir alguma coisa assim, você provavelmente vai dizer It sounds like thunder. Parece trovão. Right? <risos> Ninguém levou susto não, né? Ok. <risos> It smells like gas. A última aí. It smells like gas. Estou sentindo o cheiro. E tem cheiro de gás. Right? It smells like gas. Tem cheiro de gás. Então, em inglês, a gente vai sempre dizer que uma coisa parece com outra baseado em um dos sentidos, né? It looks like something, it tastes like something, it feels like something, it sounds like something, and it smells like something. Very well. Moving on to speak up. Let's pay attention, let's listen, and let's repeat. It's time for speak up. Very good. Go now. Book 3. Lesson 30. Speak up. He was so rude. He was so rude. Don't be crossed. He didn't mean to hurt you. Don't be cross. He didn't mean to hurt you. Spring starts tomorrow. Spring starts tomorrow. The winter is over at last. The winter is over at last. Can I tell someone about the plan? Can I tell someone about the plan? Button your lip. The plan is secret. Button your lip. The plan is secret. What do you enjoy doing on vacation? What do you enjoy doing on vacation? Going camping is a good thing to do on vacation. Going camping is a good thing to do on vacation. Why are they cleaning the farmhouse? Why are they cleaning the farmhouse? The house is infested with fleas. The house is infested with fleas. A casa está infestada de quê? De pulgas. Why do you need my help? Why do you need my help? Can you help open a stuck jar lid? Can you help open a stuck jar lid? Você pode ajudar a abrir essa jarra? A tampa dela está presa, né? A tampa presa da jarra. What was the farmer reaping? What was the farmer reaping? The farmer was reaping the wheat crop. The farmer was reaping the wheat crop. Né? O fazendeiro estava colhendo o quê? A, é, a plantação de wheat, de trigo. Do you want me to reverse the car? Do you want me to reverse the car? Can you reverse the car safely? Can you reverse the car safely? Did the car bump? Did the car bump? The car bumped against the curb. The car bumped against the curb. O carro, o quê? Bateu, colidiu com o meio fio. E... Is there anything wrong? Is there anything wrong? I reckon there's something wrong. I reckon there is something wrong. Né? Então, eu considero, eu acho que tem algo errado. What are the dancers doing? What are the dancers doing? The dancers are spinning in circle. The dancers are spinning in circle. I rarely have breakfast. I rarely have breakfast. It's not a good idea to skip breakfast. It's not a good idea to skip breakfast. Was it harvest time? Was it harvest time? It was the corn harvest time. It was the corn harvest time. Did he manage to stop smoking? Did he manage to stop smoking? It was no hardship for him to stop smoking. It was no hardship for him to stop smoking. What does this coffee taste like? What does this coffee taste like? This coffee tastes awful. This coffee tastes awful. Ugh. Did he heed his teacher's reminders? Did he heed his teacher's reminders? He ignored his teacher's reminders. He ignored his teacher's reminders. Very well. That was speak up. Let's go on to listening and talking. Let's listen to the flea story. Why are we talking about fleas? This, this is actually a very good story and I want you guys to really pay attention to this one. 
because it's a it's a it's a good one. There's a lesson in there. Let's let's listen. Book three, lesson thirty, listening and talking. The flea story. Some fleas were placed in a jar with a lid on it. Desperately, the fleas began to jump, hitting the lid in their attempt to escape. After a time, the fleas started jumping lower and lower in order to avoid smacking their heads on the lid. When they got used to the fact that they couldn't escape, the lid was removed. But the fleas continued to jump low, never escaping the jar. Since the fleas believed they could never get out of the jar, they stopped trying. They never even bothered looking up and see that the lid was no longer there. What is the purpose of this story? Okay, some people are a lot like the fleas in this story. First, they may believe that the sky is the limit, and there is nothing they cannot do. During the course of life, however, through the hardships and obstacles, they conclude they can't go on beyond that, and can grow no more. They believe that's their world and fate. They believe that if they keep on trying, they will bump their heads. They may also give up and quit easily when they discover that it is harder than they expected. Finally, we have the people who have hit their heads on so often in the past that they are afraid to even try to jump. Do not act like the fleas in the story. You are called to bring forth the potential that God has gifted you with. Never doubt your capacity to fly higher. Believe in yourself and work hard towards your goals. Never fear. Decide to be a winner. Fly higher and higher. If you are 100% serious about building success, you will definitely be seen at the top. The world is yours. The world is yours. Ah, that's a, that's such a great lesson. Yeah, gente, what's happening there? What is the the flea story? Right? We had the fleas, as pobres uh, as pobres pulguinhas que estavam presas. E aí elas pararam de pular porque elas estavam batendo a cabeça na tampa. What happened then? They took off the lid, but they would not jump anymore because they got scared. But what about you? Are you still scared of, of, of improving in your life, of jumping higher? Come on, don't be like the fleas. So I have the question for you, which is, what motivates you to be a winner? O que é que motiva vocês? O que é que motiva vocês a ser um vencedor? Focus on those motives, focus on the reason, okay? Existem coisas que a gente quer na vida, so try focusing on those things. What do you have to do in order to achieve those things, to have the things you want? You should always keep that in mind. All right, let's go on to another talk time. It's time to talk again. And we go to, oh, and we go to number one. Are you constantly improving yourself? How? How are you improving yourself? What are you doing to become better? Well, for one, you are taking this course, right? You are improving yourself by taking an English course. Number two, what is your attitude towards a challenge? I know challenges are hard, but sometimes you just got to toughen up and face it. You got to face your challenges. Number three, are you willing to pay the price to be successful? If you ever read uh, a documentary or a biography for su successful people, you will see that most of the times they go through hardships and they have to pay a heavy price. Sometimes it's social life. Sometimes it's actually a lot of money. Sometimes it's different things that you have to do. Sometimes you have to move away from your family home. Uh, different levels of success require different levels of sacrifice. Number four, what weak points can hold us back? What holds us back from being successful? Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes we just don't want to do the effort. Sometimes we're just comfortable in our own place. Number five, what can be obstacles to our success? Well, there's other people, there is money, there is location. Lots of things can be obstacles, but usually, there is a way to uh, to overcome those obstacles. And number six, how do you plan to fly higher in your life? We can always make plans. We can always try to find new ways. But if we never plan, how will we ever get there? 
So try to whip up a plan, try to make a plan for yourself and then try to stick to that plan. Because if you don't even plan, then you're already doomed to fail. Let's go back to uh, our next text. We're going to listening and reading practice where we have there a story of Thanksgiving. Why, why are we talking about Thanksgiving? Oh, it's one of the best. It's just it's one of the best uh, holidays in history. I love Thanksgiving. I participated uh, in a couple times and it's really good. Just eating and being with your family. Let's take a listen. Book three, lesson 30, listening and reading practice. Thanksgiving is a great national holiday in the USA. Tell me something about it. We celebrate it on the fourth Thursday in November. It means festive meals, parades, football, family gatherings, and of course, turkey. Turkey? That's right. The traditional Thanksgiving menu includes roast turkey. Sometimes it's informally called the turkey day. <laughs> but beside turkey, we also eat mashed potatoes and gravy, yams, corn, cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie. For many Americans, it's all about spending time together, catching up, and enjoying one another's company. And what's the origin of this holiday? We learn in history class that the first Thanksgiving was in 1621 when the pilgrims invited the Indians to a three-day feast to celebrate the autumn harvest. So Thanksgiving became a reminder to give thanks for the good things, people, and providential events in our lives. Many American families make Thanksgiving dinners special by saying grace, a prayer of thanks. Very well. Então, olha só o que ele falou aí. O que, que, que é o Thanksgiving? Né? É um dia para vocês juntar com sua família, you get together with your family, you eat, and you have many different dishes. You have turkey, you have mashed potatoes, né? purê, you have gravy, yams, yummy, corn, cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie. Right? Lots of good things. Que para quem nunca provou, delicioso. You can see all this stuff over here. Uh, and what do they do there? One of the things that I really like about Thanksgiving is uh, the idea to take a day and thank God, thank the world for providing you with uh, everything. So you thank for your family, you thank God for, uh, for your work, for whatever you got that year and you might feel the need to be thankful for. So it's a day to remember uh, to thank people for everything you have, right? Sometimes we forget the value of things that we have. And then my question for you guys is, do you celebrate Thanksgiving in your country? Do we? Do you guys think we celebrate Thanksgiving? As much as we don't really have a Thanksgiving, né? um dia de ação de graças, we do have similar holidays, similar times when we are thankful and we have our harvest festival, nosso festival da colheita. E aí, quando é que é nosso festival da colheita? Who knows? Ele passou mês passado, tá? Em junho a gente tem o São João, que é quando a gente tem o milho, né? E várias outras coisinhas aí que são populares da colheita daquela época, tá? Que é mais ou menos aí no mesmo tempo, tá? A colheita do milho, a colheita de várias coisas, que é quando o pessoal lá também tem a colheita do milho, das abóboras, de tantas outras coisas que eles fazem o é, festival é, de Thanksgiving, né? Das colheitas e quando eles têm todas essas festas. Eles só são um pouquinho mais... Tra é, tradicionalmente mais, uh, como é que eu posso dizer, mais flamboyantes com as festas do que a gente. Eles têm tradições um pouco mais, é, ala... não diria alegres, mas maiores. Né? Eles gostam de fazer paradas e desfiles e carros e aquelas coisas todas. Right? We just... Apesar de a gente ter também muita coisa legal no nosso São João. Né? A gente tem muita festa legal aí. Very well. And it's time for fun. It's time for fun. It's fun time. Question number one. Polar bears are found at which pole? Polar bears are found in the North Pole. Okay. In the North Pole, we have bears. In the South Pole, we have penguins. So North Pole, Arctic means bears. South Pole, Antarctic means no bears. It means penguins. 
Question number two. What pop group was Michael Jackson a member of when he was young? The answer is the Jackson 5. Eu colocaria a música Jackson 5 aqui, but YouTube might take us down, so I have to be careful. So I can't post a Jackson 5 song, unfortunately. Question number three. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Vitamin abundant in citrus fruits, that's vitamin C. Ascorbic acid, that's the vitamin that is abundant in citrus fruits. Question number four. What is the study of plants called? What do we call the study of plants? The study of plants is called botany. That's what the study of plants is called. People who study plants, they are botanists. Question number five. What is, uh, what do we call a mountain which could erupt? Well, if a mountain erupts, it is considered a volcano. Right? A volcano is a mountain that erupts, that has magma in it. Question number six. Which chemical element is represented by the symbol Zn? And that is zinc. Zinc is represented by Zn. And question number seven. What natural phenomena are measured by the Richter scale? Well, the natural phenomena measured by the Richter scale is earthquakes, tá? Os terremotos são medidos na escala Richter, the Richter scale. All right, and last one, let's go to uh, our last listening for understanding. Let's take a listen and see what Sean thinks of women driving. O que será que Sean pensa de mulheres dirigindo? Vamos ver aí. Book 3. Lesson 30. Listening for Understanding. Women are worse drivers than men. What is Sean's point of view about it? Listen and write it down. I feel we cannot generalize males are best or females are best. It's just individual talent and even personality. Very well. Let's let's listen to that again. Let's let's see what he said. Just real quick, and... I feel we cannot generalize males are best or females are best. Well, he says that we can't generalize. We can't, we can't say that males are best, that men are best, or females, women, are best. It's just individual talent. It's just individual talent. He thinks it just depends on your talent. And even personality. And even personality it doesn't you can be a woman and drive well you can be a woman and drive not so well you can be a guy and drive well and you can be a guy and drive not so well i have seen plenty of men who drive terribly <laughs> my brother <laughs> very well so yeah it doesn't really matter it depends on your ability and your personality all right and that's it for today's lesson. Let's review, let's recap real quick. Today we saw warm-up, words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, speak up, listening and talking, talk time, listening, rain practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. Congratulations, guys. The world is yours. You have reached the end of our course. Although, like I said, we are still going to meet once this whole pandemic is over and we can safely go back to class. Then we will meet again and review these lessons and take our tests. Okay, so don't worry, we are still going to see each other again. We're still going to uh, finish our course properly in our classroom. Okay, but for that, you need to remember to stay tuned to the instructions from CRA and remember to do your homework because it will count as attendance, tá? Essa nota de vocês vai ser levada em consideração lá no final quando a gente voltar. All right? Very well. This is Mr. Vitor signing out for today. I will see you guys hopefully soon. I can't wait for this whole pandemic to blow over so we can go back to class so I can see you guys again and we can finish our course properly. Okay? Once again, this is Mr. Victor signing out. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.